Wittenstein High Integrity Systems presents Coffee Break Training. Welcome to the second video in this Coffee Break Training series from Wittenstein High Integrity Systems. In this series we are looking at the MPU and how to use it with SafeRTOS. This video looks at a simple code example showing how to configure a user-defined MPU region. More information and additional training sessions can be found on our website. Follow us on Twitter at Wittenstein underscore Hiss for updates on new training sessions. In this series we are looking specifically at the ARM Cortex-M3 MPU. First let's consider a simple system which has tasks operating in user mode, by which I mean unprivileged mode and so MPU restrictions will apply to memory access. In this system two tasks are communicating via a queue, so both tasks need access to the queue handle. We can create a queue handle as a global data variable. We want to place this at a known, fixed memory location. This is usually done by a combination of operations, both of which are compiler specific. Firstly, we need a code pragma to indicate that the variables should be placed in a specific region. The other step is to modify the linker script to create this region. We then need to give both tasks permission to access it. The Safe RTOS demo code uses this approach in several places. Demos can be freely downloaded from our website. This shows an overview of the MPU region use in SafeRTOS. Remember that the regions are priority ordered, so region 7 takes the highest precedence and region 0 the lowest. The four fixed regions used by SafeRTOS are 0, 1, 6 and 7. Region 5 is used to cover the task stack used by each task. By having the kernel and the task stack set at the highest priority regions, it prevents errors in the user region configuration affecting the protection of these key regions. Similarly, it may be desirable to limit a task's access to the peripherals, so this region can be overridden. So we're left with three user configurable regions, which along with the task stack region, are swapped on every contact switch. These user defined regions are initialized within the task creation parameters. However, there are API functions which allow them to be modified at runtime too. If you remember from an earlier video series, when a task is created, a set of parameters are required, for example, a buffer for the task stack. Where SafeRTOS has MPU support, each task requires a set of parameters for the initial MPU configuration of the user regions. These are arranged as a structure within the task parameter declaration. Firstly, the privilege mode for the task is set. If this mode is set as privileged, then the rest of the structure does not affect the functional behavior, but it still needs to be populated. In this example, the task is going to run in unprivileged mode with a single user MPE region configured, which will contain all the global data that the task needs to access. This technique is being used to allow us to have a simple example of using the MPU rather than a suggestion for application design. Looking at this structure, we can see each region takes four parameters. SafeRTOS checks these values and if any aren't permitted, an error will be returned at task creation time. Let's look at the first region we have configured. The first parameter is the start address of the MPU region. We'll see shortly how the variable used here is externally defined in the linker script. The second parameter is the MPU region size. This needs to be large enough to contain all the data we wish to allow access to. It also needs to meet the architectural limitations. For example, in the Cortex-M3, this is a power of 2 size in bytes and alignment, and it has a minimum size of 32 bytes. The third parameter is the MPU region permissions. For example, whether this region is read-only or both read and write access is permitted. We can also set caching policies for this variable. More details about th these parameters are available in the ARM Cortex-M3 MPU documentation. The last parameter is the subregion control. The remaining two user regions are not used, so they are left unconfigured. This is the other half of the puzzle to placing variables at specific locations in memory. This is the linker script, or control file, for the linker. The syntax of these files is very specific to each toolchain. In this example, we're considering the GCC toolchain. 
these scripts can be used to create areas of memory of a specific size and place specific variables in this region with nothing else. Remembering the architectural requirements of the Cortex-M3, it requires that a region is a power of 2 in size and aligned to the size, with a minimum size of 32 bytes. The code shown here is just a snippet from the linker script. Our demo code typically creates several of these regions to isolate different tasks running in the demo. The first line, with the align statement, forces the next item placed to be aligned to 128 bytes. This is 80 in hex. While placing these variables and creating regions, we are generally not interested in placing them at absolute specific locations, only that the regions will be correctly sized and we have a way of accessing the region address. The next line allows us to do this. It assigns the address of the start of this region to the variable start poll Q data. If you remember from the previous slide, this variable was used in the MPU parameters passed into the task as the address of the MPU region. Within the C code, this variable is declared as an extern, and the linker tool completes the process to define it. The final line of this block places all variables with the poll Q data attribute into the section we've created. In the next slide, we show how we can use this. The use of double underscores in the variable names has no significance other than being a useful reminder to the programmer that these variables are associated with the linking process. This shows how global data is placed within the named region we created in the linker script. Again, this syntax is very toolchain specific and this example shows the GCC syntax. The name of the section must match the name from the linker script. This example shows the two variables polled Q and X polling producer count being placed in the poll Q data section. Care is needed to ensure that the region created in the linker is large enough to hold the data structures placed there. Unfortunately, at least with the GCC toolchain, this is a manual process. If you get this wrong, the application will compile and link successfully, but you may see MPU faults at runtime. Tracing the root cause of these problems can be quite time consuming. The next video briefly mentions some techniques for debugging MPU faults. Next, we'll look at how the mapper file, which is created by the linker, can be used to check we have allocated our regions correctly. This is an excerpt from the mapper file. The mapper file is created during the build process and is an output from the linker. This file contains a lot of information, much of which we can ignore. The most useful information in the context of MPUs is about how the program is placed in memory. Remember both the flash and RAM are mapped within the 4GB address space. While at a first glance this information looks very cryptic, what is being presented is quite straightforward to understand. This column shows the addresses in memory space. In this case we are within the RAM region which starts at hex 2 followed by 7 zeros. The mapper file also shows the commands from the linker script. So we can see our align statement from the linker script. To match this alignment requirement, a fill, or in other words an area of empty space, is required as the last structure finished at an address that doesn't meet the alignment requirements. In this case, 112 bytes, or hex 70, of space are required to align the next address to 128 bytes. The next line shows the assignment of the newly aligned address to the variable start poll queue data. Where this is referenced in the C code, i.e. the MPU parameters for the task creation, this variable will have the value in hex 20000480. The next block shows the placement of data within this section. Firstly is the pattern that the linker is matching to place the data. This matches the attribute set in the source code. At the end of the linker file will be a wildcard match for variables that aren't explicitly placed. The next line shows the pattern that has been matched for the item that's been placed. Then we have the address, the size of the data structure placed, and the object file containing this data. The size here is particularly useful information. 
it must be smaller or equal to the MPU region size allocated. Otherwise, MPU faults will occur when we try to access the data elements not in the MPU region. This video has covered quite a bit of ground. We've seen how to create a memory section in the linker script, which allows us to place global data structures at a known location. We've also seen how to assign a task MPU region to cover this section of memory. Every data structure that an unprivileged task needs to access, and that isn't contained within the task stack, will need to be set up in this manner. Multiple structures can be grouped together and placed in the same region. If the tasks are passing data into queues, it's the queue handle that needs to be accessed by the task, not the queue buffer. The kernel handles the copying of data into or from the buffer, and the kernel always operates in privileged mode. Thanks for watching. To help put the code snippets in this video into an application context, why not download one of our demo applications from the Wittenstein website? With a variety of toolchains available, you should find something matching your requirements. In the next video in this series, we'll look at a different approach to allowing tasks to access items such as queue handles without using global variables.